Hey everyone, in this lesson I'm going to talk to you guys about the absorption and metabolism of vitamin B12. And more specifically, I'm going to talk to you guys about the mechanisms by which our body actually absorbs vitamin B12 um, through our gastrointestinal system. I'm also going to talk to you guys about the regulation of vitamin B12 within our body. I'm also going to tell you guys exactly why we need vitamin B12, the enzymes that require vitamin B12. I'm also going to tell you guys about what happens when we don't have enough vitamin B12 in our diet. And then finally, I'm going to tell you guys about the uh, dietary intake or the recommended amount of vitamin, uh, vitamin B12 that we need uh, per day. So first, what is vitamin B12? So vitamin B12 is also known as cobalamin, and here's the uh, chemical structure of vitamin B12 on the right. It is a water-soluble vitamin, so um, no matter how much you actually absorb, if you actually absorb too much, you'll actually just urinate it out um, uh, because it's actually water-soluble. Uh, vitamin B12 is critical for um, central nervous system and red blood cell development and health. Uh, vitamin B12 is actually produced by bacteria and archaea, but it is not produced by animals, plants, or fungi. So um, plants and animals do not actually produce vitamin B12 on their own. Um, the animals actually get it from bacteria that um, live commensally with them. So this is a big problem with the vegetarians. Um, vegetarians do not typically get enough vitamin B12 in their diet um, simply because um, plants do not produce it on their own and they do not typically have enough bacterial production of vitamin B12. So um, how does vitamin B12 actually get absorbed in our body from our um, diet? Well, the first thing that happens is um, a Something known as haptocorin is actually produced from our salivary glands. So when we actually eat a vitamin B12, the haptocorin actually binds to the vitamin B12. This um, haptocorin and vitamin B12 complex gets transported into the stomach. Um, and in our stomach, the parietal cells um, of our stomachs actually produce um, HCl or hydrochloric acid and also produce something known as intrinsic factor. So the whole purpose of haptocorin binding to vitamin B12 is that um, haptocorin actually protects the vitamin B12 from acid degradation. So if you didn't have haptocorin binding to vitamin B12, you would have the, uh, the acid of your stomach actually degrading the vitamin B12 and maybe becoming useless for absorption. Now, uh, once you actually um, pass through the stomach, um, it'll go into the small intestine and the first part of the small intestine is the duodenum. Um, and f at the beginning of the small intestine, the pancreas lies um, in the um, area next to, du next to the duodenum and produces um, pancreatic proteases such as comatrypsin uh, and trypsin and a few others. So the pancreas releases pancreatic proteases and what it'll actually do is these pancreatic proteases will release the haptocorin from the vitamin B12 and will free the vitamin B12 allowing intrinsic factor to actually bind to the vitamin B12 in the duodenum. Next, the vitamin B12 and intrinsic factor get transported through the small intestine and arrive at the terminal ileum. And now this is where um, the um, vitamin B12 is actually absorbed in our small intestine at the terminal ileum. So that's the, the terminal ileum is just the end of the small intestine where the small intestine meets the large intestine. So the vitamin B12 actually gets um, removed from the intrinsic factor and brought into the bloodstream um, and attaches to something known as transcobalamin. But it also attaches to haptocorin as well. So haptocorin is also in the bloodstream and attaches to vitamin B12. The next place it goes is to the liver um, through the portal vein. Now, the liver is a major store of uh, vitamin B12 in the body. It stores about 2 to 5 milligrams of vitamin B12. Once it goes through the liver, um, it, it'll go through the circulation. And um, because it takes such an arduous process to actually maintain and retain and, and absorb the vitamin B12 from our diet, um, it, it's, very it's a very energy-consuming process which means that we do not want to lose the vitamin B12. Now, um, because of glomerular filtration in the kidney, um, some of the vitamin B12 is actually lost in our uh, urine filtrate, but 
something known as maglin. Uh, maglin is another um, another protein complex that's actually produced in the renal tubules actually um, binds to the vitamin B12 and allows the vitamin B12 to be reabsorbed so it's actually not lost in the urine. So the body, once the body gets the vitamin B12, it makes sure it retains the vitamin B12 so it's not lost so easily. So why do we um, need vitamin B12? Why does it go through this entire um, complex process of absorption. Well, there's actually two enzymes in mammals that actually require vitamin B12. One of them is known as homocysteine methyltransferase. And now what happens is homocysteine will actually be converted to methionine via homo a homocysteine methyltransferase enzyme. And this process is part of um, something known as the activated methyl cycle. And this, I'll talk about this in another video later. And the other enzyme that requires vitamin B12 is methyl malonyl CoA mutase. So when we have methionine, so methionine is one of the sulfur containing amino acids, there's a few steps it, uh, it takes um, that gets processed to methyl malonyl CoA. And then methyl malonyl CoA will actually be processed to uh, succinyl CoA by this enzyme methyl malonyl CoA mutase. However, if we don't have enough vitamin B12 in our diet, this enzyme does not work properly and we'll actually get a buildup of methyl malonic acid. Now, when you get a buildup of methyl malonic acid, you can actually get axonal neuropathy. So this causes some of the symptoms that are associated with vitamin B12 deficiency, such as fatigue um, and some other motor, um, motor problems as well. So now that we kind of know why we need vitamin B12 in our diet, how much do we actually need per day? So as usual, the dietary intake depends on how old you are. Um, uh, in the first six months of, of life, we need about 0.4 micrograms per day. Um, 7 to 12 month old um, babies require about 0.5 micrograms. 1 to 3 year olds need about 0.9 micrograms. Four to eight year olds need about 1.2 micrograms. Nine to 13 year olds need about 1.8 micrograms. Adults need 2.4 micrograms. Now this is the number I want you guys to remember. Um, in an adult, an adult typically needs about 2.4 micrograms of vitamin B12 per day. That's the recommended dietary intake. Now in pregnancy, we typically need a little bit more, um, 2.6 micrograms per day and um, in lactation, um, women typically need a bit more as well. Uh, they need about 2.8 micrograms per day. So again, guys, just remember that adults typically need about 2.4 micrograms per day with um, some exceptions in pregnancy and lactation where you need a bit more. So um, that is the key information I want you guys to know from this slide is that adults need about 2.4 micrograms per day. Anyways, guys, that was a quick video on uh, vitamin B12 absorption and metabolism. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.